Hey, what's up guys? Back with another beginner's guide and today we're talking about islands. Islands can be intimidating when you are first starting up. I know they were for me and honestly I tried to avoid them for as long as I could. However, they're a great and safe way of making resources in silver. The cool thing is that they work for you while you're offline. I'm going to share some tips and tricks along the way to help you min-max your islands. So make sure to watch them till the end. But please keep in mind this is your island and you can do with it what you please. Now islands can be created in any major royal city and there really isn't a best city to make yours in. You might want to sync up with your guild island or simply make it in your favorite city. Personally I think Bridgewatch is the overall city I would recommend. The reason is Bridgewatch has a great safe surrounding area for stone and hide. You also get an additional 58% stone refining bonus in the city or 40% if you do it in your own island. The other benefit is that Martlock is just northwest of you. You can transport all of your hide and craft it in Martlock which gives a 58% increase to refining hide and then simply transport it back or store it at the Martlock bank. The good news is if you change your mind and wish your island was at a different city, you can demolish all your buildings and collect about 80% of your resources. You will then abandon your island at the island merchant. You won't need to fully upgrade your island at the new location. You will only need to repurchase the entry. Now once you've chosen your preferred city, you're going to go ahead and head over to the island merchant. If you can't find them, click the letter N which opens up your mini map and then you'll be looking for the little palm tree. To get started with your island, you'll need 16,878 silver and at least 7 days of premium. You can purchase it by clicking on the letter A icon at the top right of your screen which takes you to the Albion store. Click on premium and then you can see that 7 days premium is $4.95 plus any applicable taxes. You'll only need to purchase premium one time to get started. Once your premium ends, you can still access your island. The other way to purchase premium would be through gold and silver. If you click on the crown at the top right of your screen, you'll see that you can buy one month of premium with 3,750 gold or 16.9 million silver. If you want to stay free to play the entire game, this would be the way to do it. If you can't afford premium, watch to the end of the video because I have something that can help you out. Now that you have premium and have purchased your island, Let's head on in and see what it's all about. The first thing that you'll notice when entering your island is the access rights board. This allows you to customize the permissions of your island. You'll have the option to add a co-owner who will share the same rights as you and have full control of the island. You can also allow players to simply visit your island or you can add builders and allow those players to work on upgrading your buildings and farm plots. As you build homes and farms throughout the island, you'll notice that each building has its own set of personal access rights. You can customize them to provide access. For example, one thing that players do is assign a farm to a specific player and rent it out to them. This allows the player to access the island and use the farm to grow any additional crops that they might need. When starting your island at 1 of 6, you'll have one spot to build your initial house. You can build by clicking on the letter H. This will bring up a menu of building options. The first tab will be for buildings like lumber mill, smelter, tanner, or stonemason. The second tab will be for your farming and you can create a farm, an herb garden, pasture, or kennel. Now the most important tab will be the last one which allows you to create your house or a guild hall if you're creating your guild island. I recommend only building homes and farms. When first starting, you'll want to build your homes to tier 3. This will allow you to hire up to 2 laborers per home. My recommendation would be to hire gamekeepers as your laborers. The reason being you'll purchase journals from them that will need to be filled by killing and skinning animals which will then be returned to the laborer. This will send the gamekeeper to work for the next 22 hours. Once they are back, they will return with rewards for you and gain experience. The more experience they gain, the higher tier they will become and the higher tier rewards they will bring. Gamekeeper laborers are great to start off with as they reward you with hide and trophies. In order to keep your laborers happy, you will need to fill your tier 3 home with one tier 3 bed per laborer, one tier 3 table per the entire household, and fill the rest of their happiness with trophies. If you can afford a 2 of 6 island which will cost you an additional 55,000 silver, you'll have a total of 3 building plots and gain 1 farm plot. I would strongly recommend unlocking at least 2 of 6. You'll want to make sure to build 2 additional tier 3 homes and fill them with 2 laborers each. Now that you have a 2 of 6 island, 3 tier 2 homes and 1 farm, you might be wondering what you should plant to make the most amount of money. There are 2 crops that I would recommend which are carrots and wheat. Carrots and wheat are valued about the same on the market, but carrot seeds cost 3 times less than wheat. However, they have a 0% chance to yield seeds when harvested in comparison 
to wheat having a 60% chance to yield seeds when harvested. When first starting and having premium, you want to purchase carrot seeds either from the farm merchant or the marketplace in your main city. They will cost you roughly 1,800 silver each and you will need 9 to fill your farm. So why carrots over wheat at the start? Well with premium you'll be given focus every day and you can use this focus to water your carrot seeds which will increase their percentage yield from 0 to 200. This means while having premium and only one farm plot, you will spend less on the startup and make just as much as you would by planting wheat. You will also be able to yield enough carrot seeds to replant for the next day and not have to reinvest in your farm. When you move up over two farms, you won't have enough focus to water all your crops. This is when I recommend planting wheat. The initial investment will cost you about 4.5k per seed. However, they have a 60% seed yield with no premium. Once you are at five farms, you should get three farmfuls of seeds back. When you have fully upgraded your island, you will have 12 total building plots and five farm plots. I recommend building 12 houses and keeping them all tier three filled with two gamekeeper laborers. If you decide on keeping premium, you'll want one farm to be filled with carrots and the other four with wheat. Make sure to use your focus on watering your carrots to increase their yield rate. I hope you've gained value out of this beginner's guide for islands and I'm glad that you stuck through the video. Like I mentioned, if you're not able to afford premium, this is your opportunity to do so. I'll be having two giveaways for Steam gift cards. The first will be taking place on January 20th for a $10 Steam gift card and the second will be a $25 Steam gift card once we have reached 100 YouTube subscribers and 100 Twitch followers. If we reach that goal by the 20th, we will run both on the same day. Both giveaways will be happening on twitch.tv slash donny956, so make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to catch me live, I do stream every day from 8am to 11am Central Time or 2pm to 5pm UTC on both Twitch and YouTube. We enjoy doing a lot of community content, so please make sure to stop by and say hello.